Hi everyone, it's James here and in this tutorial we're going to be doing a follow-up to the previous tutorial where we created a drop-down menu just using CSS and some HTML and in this tutorial we're going to actually extend that by creating an off-screen menu so that when you go down to a mobile size, a mobile breakpoint, we'll actually push the menu off the page and then we're going to use a simple technique to bring the menu back onto the page or push it back off depending on whether the user's opened or closed the navigation. So let's take a look at how you'd create an off-screen menu just using some HTML and CSS. So this is pretty much where we left off our project in the last tutorial. We've got the uh, menu at the top of the page here and menu item two has got a drop down on there. And we did put a media query in so that when the page shrinks to about 600 pixels, I think it was, the menu then gets fixed to the right hand side. So this would be like the user was viewing the page on a mobile device. Uh, but that's not good enough really, we want to free up this space here and move the menu somewhere else so that the uh, user has to actually open the menu. Um, we're going to do that by actually pushing this element here with the menu items off the screen to the right here. And then when the user clicks a button, it'll be like a hamburger icon, um, we'll actually bring this menu back in and display it uh, pretty much like it is now. So I'm going to show you a few things during this tutorial and the first thing is obviously to get the menu to uh, go onto the right hand side off the page and then how to bring it back into the page and we're going to be doing that without using any JavaScript we're just going to use some HTML elements and some CSS trickery so that we don't need to actually write any JavaScript although you could quite easily do this with JavaScript as well. And I'll also show you how to customize the hamburger icon and also how to transition it into a different icon when the menu is actually open. So let's get started with making our off-screen menu. Uh, so the first thing we'll probably want to do is add some styling to actually start moving this menu uh, to off the screen. So we're going to actually do that in the media query because that's the only time we want this menu to actually move. So right down at the bottom of my existing SCSS file, you'll see the media query that we set up. And the first thing I'm going to do in the unordered list, so this is going to be the main uh, top level of the menu that we've got, uh, I'm going to set its position to relative. And I'm also going to set a negative right value, so for example if I use 200 pixels. You can see when the page refreshes that the menu is no longer appearing, and if we just scroll to the right hand side you can see it's now appearing on this right hand side of the page. So two things here, we can actually use a variable that we created uh, in the previous project, so we had the menu item width, so we want to push the menu uh, off the screen by that, that much, which should basically give us the same value, I think it was 200 pixels already, uh, so it's still there. And also we don't want the user to have the ability to actually look at that menu as well, so we're going to want to hide it from them. So back in our markup, I'm just going to put another element in the body tag here. Uh, it's just going to be a div with a class of page wrapper, and you'll see why I'm doing this in just a second. Uh, so all the way, just tidy that up. And back in our CSS, let's just scroll to the top here. So we don't want this in the media query, we want this to be present all the time. So I'll just put it underneath the body uh, declaration that we've got here. So page wrapper. And what I'm going to do is say the height of this is 100% of the body. And also we want to say the overflow uh, of the X is actually hidden. So if any of the contents that's inside of this page wrapper actually go outside it, then it won't be shown. And just so finally, so that the uh, height of the page wrapper is 100% as well, we're just going to target the HTML and body tags together and just make sure their height is 100% of the content. So now if we go into our developer tools here and you can see this page wrapper element and if we just hover over that you can see it's wrapping the entire page right down to the bottom of the image that we've got and if we try and scroll to the right now you can see we can't actually see the navigation anymore because uh, that page wrapper overflow is actually hiding the menu that's off the screen. So that's good we've got our menu hidden um, but we obviously need some way for the user to get it back as well because at the moment they've got no menu and can't see anything so let's add a bit of markup uh, to enable us to do that. I'm going to add two things inside of the nav element uh, just after the h1 tag. So I'm going to add uh, an input and it's going to be a checkbox. And I'm also going to add a label, which at the moment I'm just going to put uh, an equal sign so it looks a little bit like a hamburger icon. Don't worry, you're going to customize that in a minute. And I'm also going to set up an ID for the input as well. So I can call it something like mobile nav, for example. And then what's really important here is to make sure we get the same ID in the for attribute of the label. And if we save that. And just to demonstrate why we set that for attribute there, you can see that we've got our checkbox here, which we can obviously turn on and off. 
but the label that's here with the equal sign inside it, this is the label element, if we click on that as well, because it's got the same for attribute as the ID of the input box, we can also use that element to actually check or uncheck the checkbox. So that is a great first start. We've got all the components. Let's just uh, start gluing them together. So back in our style.scss, uh, inside of the nav element, we've now got that uh, mobile nav checkbox that we just created. So I'm just going to char target that and say uh, mobile nav. And I'm just going to say set its display equal to none. because We don't really want to see the checkbox at all. We just want to see the label that's uh, given to us for it. And actually thinking about it as well, we want to hide the label uh, on the default view as well. So when we're on a desktop view, uh, we don't want that to be displayed. Uh, so the label that's got the attribute of mobile nav uh, will also hide that too. So it should disappear again now. Uh, so what we will do is in the actual media query. So when we hit this breakpoint that we're on at the moment here, we actually want to show that uh, label. So the label again uh, with a for attribute of mobile nav. We can then set its display as block and it's already in a flex container inside of this nav element so it should just uh, appear as it was before. Good stuff. And then now we will actually target the mobile nav. So this is the checkbox uh, with the ID of mobile nav and we want to target its checked state. So when the actual checkbox is checked or when we've clicked the label to check it, this rule here will become effective. So now we can do some more customization to the various different elements on our page, depending on whether the checkbox is checked or not. So what I'm going to do here is use one of the CSS sibling selectors. So this one is the tilde selector, and this basically says, find me a UL element that's on the same uh, level as this particular mobile nav element. So this UL element is basically the element that's been pushed right by a negative amount here. So all I want to do now is just bring it back into the page. So I'll just say right is equal to zero. And now if I've got that hierarchy correct, when I actually click on the label here now, you can see the menu pops back in and clicking it again makes it disappear again. And that's because we're toggling that right value over here for the uh, UL element. So when the mobile nav isn't checked, it'll be a negative value uh, or negative 200, depending on the menu item width variable. And when it is checked, we'll get a value of right, which is equal to zero, which brings it back into the page. And a quick win to give us a nice sliding effect is to put a transition on that UL element. And we can just transition the right property when it changes, 0.3 seconds and ease it in. And if we save that now, when we go back to the page, if we then toggle the button again, you can see it's sliding in and out with our transition. And we didn't need to do much to make that look a bit more impressive. Okay, so there's still a fair amount of work to do as well for the uh, hamburger icon and just some general tidying up. So let's go and set up some more styling for our actual label. So the first thing I'm going to do is set it to a cursor of pointer. So now when we actually hover over the hamburger icon, you can see it looks more like a hand and you have to be pretty exact. You've got to get it right over the actual uh, equal sign there at the moment. So what we could do is just make it a little bit bigger for the actual label itself. So we could set uh, widths of say 30 pixels, and maybe a height of 20 pixels. And now when the page refreshes, you can see we can actually target some of the white space around of the actual equal sign as well uh, and that just makes it a bit easier to click. We'll be customizing the hamburger icon shortly anyway so uh, it'll make it a bit bigger for us to hit anyway. So the next things I'm going to do I'm actually going to set a position of absolute for this uh, because we're actually going to be moving this element as well. You can see it's just slid over here to the left hand side for the moment but what I want to do is actually push it to the other side so we'll say right is 50 pixels. And we should probably set some line height on this so that it's centered as well. Although again, with our customized hamburger, it won't make too much difference. And then finally, we're going to set a display of flex in here and set the flex direction uh, to column. And then the justification is just going to be space between. So the hamburger is now in the center of the menu there. But as I say, we're going to change that in a moment anyway. But now if we click the label over here, you can see the menu slides in. But unfortunately, it covers that hamburger icon. So we actually want to uh, move the hamburger icon as well. So what we're going to do is go into this check state here. So when the actual checkbox is checked, uh, we don't want to worry about the unordered list anymore because that menu's uh, moving fine. But what we do want to look at is the label. So we're going to grab the label that's right next to it using the CSS plus operator and we'll set its right value equal to a calculation. So we're going to set it to 25 pixels 
more than the menu item width. So we can use this variable, this menu item width variable, but in order to use this value within the calculation, we actually need to use SCSS interpolation. So uh, we put a hash and then some curly braces around here and just close curly braces there. And if we save that, you can see the hamburger icon now appears over here on the left hand side. And if we click that again, you can see it slides over to the right hand side where it was originally, and then it moves over to the left of the menu when it opens up. Uh, but we need to make it slide as well because currently it's just jumping from place to place. So let's make it slide along the same way as the open menu does. And we'll do that in our actual label here. So we'll say a transition property for bright is 0.3 seconds again, and we'll ease it in. And let's try that again. And now you can see the hamburger icon is kind of attached to the menu and it's sliding left and right, depending on whether the uh, checkbox is actually checked or not. So that's looking pretty good. Um, the only thing really we want to do is just actually customize the hamburger itself. So we just used a particular character at the moment. Now there's a few things that you can do. Um, you can actually just put in your own background images or image tags even. So you could just change this for whatever you like in here. Just load in an image and that will be the uh, image that's displayed as the hamburger. Just for a bit of a challenge, I'm going to do something different here. I'm just going to fill this in with three span tags, and we're going to use those to create three uh, lines as you would find on a hamburger icon. And then we're going to animate those depending on whether the actual uh, checkbox is checked or not. So we'll save that and then go back to our styles. So we can't see anything at the moment, those spam tags aren't appearing. So we need to put in some rules for those in here and they're inside the label. So that's probably the best place to target them. And the first thing I'm going to do is set a height of three pixels uh, for each line. I'm going to set a background color uh, equal to black. And just to be sure, we want to make sure that they span 100% of the width of the label that we've created there. We'll set their position as relative. And I'm actually going to change the way the label handles uh, elements inside it. I'm going to say it's display uh, flex. Uh, the flex direction is going to be a column. And to say justify the content is space between, which will basically put those three spans up there as lines on the page. And if we click the actual uh, element itself, those three spans, you should see that the menu functionality is still there and still works. So we could just leave it as that, it looks okay. But I'm just going to add some extra customization onto that. Uh, so we'll go down to the check state here. So when we're inside of the, the label, I'm going to target the spans and I'm going to do it individually uh, by using the nth child selector. So we'll say for the first one and just copy that a couple of times, uh, second one and the third one. So these correspond to each of the spans, uh, top, middle and bottom that are on our page at the moment here. So the first one, I'm actually going to do a simple transform. So I'm going to say transform and I'm going to rotate it by minus 45 degrees, which will just put it at a diagonal angle. I'm just going to leave the second one for a moment, but the bottom one, I'm just going to do another transform on that, uh, transform. And I'm just going to say rotate that one, but this time I'm going to rotate it to 45 degrees. So now when the checkbox is activated, you can see those span lines have been transformed and I've done something completely wrong there because it shouldn't look like that at all. Um, probably uh, I've got these the wrong way around. Okay, so that's the way I want them, uh, but there's some more work to get the lines in the place where I want them to be, and you'll see what it is when we've done that. Uh, but the second one, I don't want that one anymore, so I'm going to set the opacity of that to zero, just to remove it from the page. Um, what I'm going to do with these two lines that are left, I'm going to kind of like line them up one on top of the other, so it makes a cross sign, so it'll look a bit like a close symbol to close the menu, uh, but you can see it still works if we actually click on that at the moment. Uh, it just doesn't look very good as an icon. So what I'm going to do is actually change the transform origin for both of those so that we can move them into the right place. So we'll say uh, nth child, and we're targeting the first element. I'm going to set its transform origin. So I'm going to set two values in here for the transform origin. The first is 10% and 0% for the second. You can see it moves that icon slightly down uh, a little bit, that line that we've got there. And then for the bottom line, the third one, I'm going to set a transform origin of zero and the second of 100%. And it kind of creates a cross sort of symbol. Uh, could probably tweak that a little bit more, but uh, it'll do for our example. So again, the checkbox is still there. So when we uh, click that, it's going to flip between the hamburger and the cross icon. And if we set on the span tags uh, an initial opacity of one, 
We can then transition all of the different things that are changing with this animation. So we'll transition all the properties by 0.3 seconds. And now when we actually close and open the menu, you can see those span lines are actually fading in and out and moving from their original positions to the rotated positions to create the cross. I'll just change the actual timing of this just to show you what it's looking like. So you can see the elements are just moving from the one position and fading in and out. to create that animated effect, but that's obviously way too long for our animation, so 0.3 seconds is probably fine. And that's pretty much it for our customized hamburger. So we've got our menu and we've got the ability here to view all of the submenus inside of there as we did in the previous tutorial. And we've got the ability to actually close the menu as well and take it off screen. And finally, if we just open up this back to our desktop view, so if we go over the 600 pixels, you can see obviously the off screen menu disappears. We don't have that anymore and we've got the original desktop view of the menu with the drop down here and just to prove it one last time we'll go back to the mobile view and there you can see the hamburgers come back and we can trigger open and close the off-screen menu so that's pretty much how you create an off-screen menu without using any javascript just create using some css as you can see it all hinges on that checkbox and having a check state and then actually customizing the way things look depending on whether that checkbox is checked or not. The only real downside with using this checkbox method rather than using uh, JavaScript is we have to have our input and our label at the same level as the menu. So this is the menu here. Otherwise, the CSS selectors for this won't work. But as long as that's not a problem, you can use this technique to put an off-screen menu on without the need of JavaScript. So if you're trying to avoid JavaScript for your project, this is a great solution. So thanks very much for watching and hopefully you found some useful techniques to apply to your own projects. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials.